Hello, this is Shesha Chalam from Ashwagat Mysore. So today, I will be starting a new chapter, a new series on medical astrology, which I will be first only teaching. I will not be taking up charts. It will be only the theoretical part, the technical part and the detailed explanations of the Rashi, the Bhava, the Nakshatras, the planets, the combinations and the Yogas. So, only after that, I will be taking the charts for each and every problem and explain their intricacies. But before that, let us learn. So, medical astrology, this is the first class for you people. So, this is the South Indian chart. So, please try to understand, I will not be able to accommodate two charts here. It will be the South Indian chart. So, please, please try to understand that there is no difference between North Indian and South Indian except for the placements and the way it is arranged. That's all. So, in the South Indian chart, it is mostly, you know, it's always cyclic in order. In the North Indian chart, it goes, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 like this. So, it goes anti-clockwise, but the North Indian chart is more practically correct. But it's uh, for us because we have got used to this. So please, the people who are uh, in the North and the North Indians, please excuse, but please learn. The concept is more important. So this is Aries. This is Taurus. This corner one is Gemini. Cancer. Leo. Then again we have Virgo. Then this is Libra. This is Scorpio, Sagittarius, then we have Capricorn, we have Aquarius and Pisces. So, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. The Rashi Karakatvas, the Bhava Karakatvas, everything will be discussed later. But today we are discussing the Kala Purusha. What is Kala Purusha? Apart from each and every chart, your individual chart, your ascendant might start anywhere. But as per the Kala Purusha, the zero degree Aries is taken as the starting point of the zodiac. So, that is the first house. The midpoint of the first house here is zero degree Aries. So don't get confused again. I know people who have studied a little bit into astrology, they will go into depth of going into the doubts of understanding. If, if it is Kala Purusha Aries, then which is the midpoint of the ascendant? Whether it is 15 degrees Aries or whether it is zero degree Aries or it is 30 degree Aries. So let us understand. Here, the Kala Purusha's midpoint, Lagna's midpoint, that is where the Lagna is posited, is 0 degrees, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, but within Aries. This is the point. So, when I say head of the Kala Purusha, it spans this point. So, do not take it here. Take it here. We, why, why is it that we are, we are more interested about the midpoint? When we see human beings are like, you can cut a human being exactly in the center and he can be equally divided into two equal parts which are very similar. You know, there, there will be not a single change you can see on either side from outside. Externally. Internally, yes, you will get the heart this side, you will not get the heart on the other side. Very rare cases to have a heart on the right side. But still, internally, I am not talking about the internal. Internally also, most of the parts of the human body are all divided into two equal parts. Like, you know, you have the left brain, you have the right brain, you have the left brain, you have the right lung, you have the left lung, you have the right kidney, the left kidney, the right testicle, the left testicle, you have the right knee, left knee. You have most of the parts are the same except for the digestive system. You can't have two stomachs 
you will not have two intestines of different uh, so you don't have everything you know equally divided into two parts but still most of the parts are very much you know it's like a binary two you know one here and one there so we have god has given us two eyes two nostrils two ears you know the mouth having exactly the equal number of teeth on either side so that is why the midpoint is very much important here so when we go to the drakana i have already explained drakana with regard to body parts but i will go through the drakana once again when i am explaining medical astrology in detail because when we take up marriage and marital aspects we see the d9 chart when we take up the profession and professional uh, career and development and uh, regard to progress in professional life we take the d10 chart so same likewise when i take up the medical astrology i will have to see three charts d1 bhava and drakana compulsory d6 is also included here d6 the sixth division which is called roga ripu runa r r r we have to take up that also we will we'll do it as the day goes we will start doing all this so let us go through one by one we have head general health bones avayava dehascha and avayava these are all if you go through the classics you will understand that it is there in sanskrit the same thing has been now translated and written in english so that it is easy for us to understand that's all skin scalp that is the upper part so this particular house does not show or does not refer to what is here see it does not refer these things it is only this part where your cap covers your head so that is the scalp and all that which is inside and also the other parts like the skin and the most important the brain so it includes in the first house 15 degrees on either side of the ascendant so why is that 15 degrees on either side of the ascendant important because the brain has a prefrontal cortex which is there here prefrontal cortex it has a hypothalamus behind so you you cannot simply take it like you know you cut the brain you will not get similarity everywhere so you will have a prefrontal cortex you will have the pineal gland somewhere in between you have the pituitary you have the uh, cerebral cerebellum and you have this uh, hypothalamus so this has to be defined we will come to that later when we go into the details so the face the eye the right eye you know this is the right part and this is the left so from the center of the ascendant if you go behind it is the left and when you go to the right it is the right so the right eye the teeth once again the right part of the teeth this can be defined in the drakana in detail but here let us say this second house will represent the face so oh, if you if you know or you know i have learned this from uh, doctors people ent specialists so you go to them you ask them they will tell you this 8 to 9 inches of the span of your face covers maximum number of organs maximum number of organs and it is the most complicated uh, you know piece of creation by god it's not only for human beings for any other animal also but for the for the human being it is highly evolved so this particular part till your jaws is fully having a lot number of organs and they all are having very very important functionalities without which your life looks very incomplete so that is the face it includes expression it includes uh, swallowing you know swallowing comes in the throat but it starts from your tongue so the tongue the teeth the mouth the nose the sight the smell the smile you know even the smell the olfactory the nervous systems the retina the nervous systems you know glaucoma all these problems we are doing medical astrology now i'll be talking all these things so 
all this comes into a very very highly packed second house very important you can see the other parts are all little free you have space here not much of traffic you here it's full i can't write anything more in the first and the second and the third house because it is fully packed so okay the years once again when i tell you the years is it only the external years or it is also including the internal years the internal years will span from here till there it starts from the scalp it's inside it's inside your head it's not this is not the only organ which is the ear and ent specialist will tell you you know the ear will have a, a drum there and from there the other parts of the ear the most important parts are inside so it starts from half of the brain and goes till the ears which is the right ear so the third house is for the right ear and this side it goes like this you know from here it starts and from here it starts and it goes like this the left ear so it it spans in between so let us understand it a little more detail when we are going into problems of the ear problems of the neck you know this is the neck which is in the front the nape of the neck will again come here so that those things i have not referred here we call it as the nape you know people who are suffering from uh, spondylolysis and thrombosis will understand what this problem is because it you they suffer with the problems here you know people having problems of meningitis meningitis which has started from this part will have problems here so let us go through the third house which is neck larynx we have bronchus that is the starting part of the uh, branching of the uh, trachea which will actually go to the lungs which is uh, which causes uh, problems when it gets inflamed we call it as bron bronchitis or bronchitis whatever it's actually i i pronounce it as bronchitis so uh, shoulders arms vocal cords thyroid thyroid gland the most important gland second master gland which is next to the pituitary this is the pituitary it's it's in there you know the pituitary is here in the brain and the thyroid is in the throat these two fellows are very important so next the fourth house so as uh, my wife was uh, telling me that you should also tell some of the other parts like the esophagus you know Uh, only the larynx is there where is the esophagus you should have to tell that so it's in between the third and the fourth house you know esophagus i think esophagus starts from o e e s so let me not write that i don't know the spelling exactly so the chest the thorax and the breast the lungs the heart the aorta and the uh, veins okay what i have written there i myself could not make out the veins super vena cava inferior vena cava all this you know when when i when whenever the teacher would uh, tell about this um, vena cavas so in our uh, my language uh, in kannada cava means a uh, uh, gutter so <laughs> you tell you it's a gutter ma'am she would tell yeah yeah it's it's the same work it will it will bring back all your uh, you know waste into the heart and get it cleaned so we have all these uh, major veins here the uh, arteries are here the major arteries the aorta and many other arteries which actually split and you know they have a lot of uh, bifurcations where one major goes into the your uh, you know pumps blood to the brain the other ones go back uh, to other parts of the body so go down there so we go to the fifth house here fifth sign actually or the fifth house from the kala purusha which gives you the upper part of the liver the spleen the pancreas the stomach the starting part of the small intestine so this is somewhere in between you have the diaphragm so you have the diaphragm here so the diaphragmatic breathing what people teach is all because of this uh, one five combination so you do this these parts these uh, organs will all get you know very they become very happy if you do what we call kapalabhati so i'll be including that those things also you know 
కపాలపాతి ఇది వెరీ వెరీ గుడ్ ప్రాణాయామ ఇట్స్ అ బ్రీదింగ్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ కాల్ కపాలపాతి సో వెన్ యూ డూ దాట్ ఇట్ ఇన్విగ్రేట్స్ ఆర్ గివ్స్ యూ లాడ్ ఆఫ్ ఎనర్జీ టు దిస్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద బాడీ సో విల్ కమ్ దేర్ లేటర్ ఆన్ సో వీ హ్యావ్ ది స్మాల్ ఇంటెస్టైన్స్ ద డియోడినమ్ ద ఈలియం అండ్ ద జజునమ్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద స్టార్టింగ్ పార్ట్స్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ ద హోల్ థింగ్ ఇట్స్ ద స్టార్టింగ్ పార్ట్ బికాస్ this it comes in between the fifth and the sixth and then we have the lower part of the liver we have the gall bladder we have the uh, intestines and we have the lower abdomen you know for people who suffer from uh, the lower abdomen problems the worst of it is hernia okay so then we come to the seventh house so once we jump on from first to the seventh there is a very different thing happening here this is the front and this suddenly goes to the back so that means you get the kidneys which are posteriorly located it is in the posterior position it is not in the front so uh, when uh, the kidney operation is done they don't start cutting from the star, you know front they go to the side the person will be like this so the uh, kidney low back bladders you know the urethra all this comes here reproductive organs the prostate all that is hidden inside and which is uh, which are very much important for excretion and very much important for our the reproduction and all these things are there in the seventh house we go to the eighth house this is the secret house so as we think uh, you know the in that particular way it also has external organs or reproductive organs like the testis the vagina so these uh, you know the uh, glands all these things come here so erective prob- erectile dysfunction or uh, other problems like uh, warts this can be seen in the eighth house you know warts people you know women suffer with uh, um, external warts which is very painful extremely frustrating and it happens usually with people going through hpv human papilloma virus so anyway i am not a doctor i have not studied any medical uh, through the allopathic or the homeopathic or the ayurvedic but astrologically so excretory system the colon the rectum etc which is also including the anal uh, um, opening which can also give you so many difficulties like you know this is the colon problems the rectum problems and the fissures you know the fistulas etc many many problems so medical astrology is to study and to understand how to diagnose so to diagnose you need to study all these things in detail so the ninth house is the hip bones the lower hip bones which actually are now getting into the hips and the thighs so the joint the major joint you know you have the ball joint here near your hips that ball joint is very important and that's in the ninth house the thighs the upper varicose so anyone who has suffered varicose veins will understand that the problem is not only in the calf muscle it also starts from the thigh so they have two points where we nowadays in internet you people are getting to understand that that is the second heart of a human being so the heart pumps blood to all parts of the body but due to gravity the parts you know the blood which is above the heart can easily flow back to the heart so the veins from the brain to the heart don't get you know clogged clotted or they don't have much of a difficult job to do because we stand most of the times we are upright uh, until we sleep so but the varicose the varicose has to take the blood from each cell in our body from our toes and you know the deoxygenated blood all those free radicals which are there in the blood and all these things which are which are to be eliminated has to be thrown it takes it and starts pumping it up you know, the 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 pressure is too high for it so people who are into the problems of varicose 
or they are in the initial initial stages of varicose they will know how difficult it is you know people who do yoga will have to do certain yogas like halasana you know um, sarvangasana so where the uh, legs are lifted so different different kinds of postures are good for different kinds of difficulties so the varicose is a vein it's a main vein which actually pumps back blood from your legs to your heart so next we go to the 10th we have the knee joint the major knee joint so we also have, this is also the middle part of the varicose so when you see the the varicose you will be seeing it just below the knee joint behind the calf muscles or just above the calf muscles you know not behind the calf muscle behind the upper part of the shin bone in the leg if this is the leg you will be seeing it somewhere here you know if this is the thigh and these are the knees and this is the leg you will be seeing it here so that's just behind or below the knee joint you will see it within one and a, one and a half or one inch or two inches from there you can see the blue coloration so if you have blue coloration please join uh, a good yoga teacher who knows about these things and you know learn yoga or if it is in the second level please go to the doctor you know a vascular surgeon will be able to help you so the 11th house has ears the left one as i told you this is the other part then we have the calf muscles the shin bones and the major varicose valve which is there in the calf muscle so people who are suffering with this varicose will have a lot of pain so you know this is very important i am i am talking too much about the varicose let me not go there so um, this is actually the nape that is what i told you the nape so this is the front of the throat this is the nape of the throat that's what i was explaining so going to the 12th house one of the most important is the 12th house so if a person has fully you know grown if a person has fully grown has had good uh, nourishment and nutrition his legs will have the correct size if he has not had good nourishment in his early part of his life the end portions that is the fingers the toes will not be fully grown this is seen in many cases and you can see that in the 12th house which will actually which actually controls the left eye the feet the toes and the soul so we all know that the soul has all the nerve endings and the veins or the capillaries which have gone there so that is why magnetotherapy vibration therapy the hydrotherapy all therapies are done to the legs that is why you people go for the pedicures and the manicures you love it you know why it relaxes you it relaxes you a palm massage a hand massage a arm massage with your pedicure with your leg massage your soul massage will absolutely relax you so that's because it is now uh, you know it is trying to caress or you are sending good uh, messages to the organs so all the organs are now connected either to your hand or to your sole of your feet so your palm and your legs are very very important organs of your body so all are important because i have been telling everything is important because a person who is suffering in a particular region will know how much important it is so this is a total um, you know generalistic way of explaining the parts of the body uh, and this is the first class of medical astrology so please be with me till the end of medical astrology so that you will be able to finish this and you will be able to sit and you know analyze a chart and understand as to why did this particular thing happen to a person and what might happen in the future so you also share among the friends who are studying astrology yeah you can share this particular video uh, or the, this particular series to your friends who are also interested in astrology because i think this will help them so thank you very much for today's class